I'm going to create the directory on my desktop by just right clicking and going new folder and I'll just give the folder a name I'm just going to call it loan calculator so you could also create directory the same way if you are using a Mac so that's my directory there I have called it loan calculator next thing I want to do is create the HTML structure for the project I am going to be using sublime text editor to create the structure so this is the sublime text editor I am going to add the HTML code I've already pre-staged it so I'll just add the code on and I'll explain the code line by line so the first thing I'm going to do is name my file here I'm going to call this is going to be my HTML file so I'm calling it loan calculator.html and I'm saving it inside my directory which I've called loan calculator so I'm gonna click Save and you can see here it displays the name of the document and here on the bottom right also you can see it says HTML so any code I add in here will be an HTML code I have added some basic structure to our HTML document I'm just gonna run through them with you line one here is the doc type which basically is a declaration to the web browser just to let them know that the type of document it should display is HTML document and here this is where the actual HTML document starts from doc type tells the browser this is a HTML5 document so from line 3 to line 23 is what constitutes the actual HTML document so we've got the head section inside the head section we've got a meta car set and um, this attribute basically refers to the Unicode the type of characters um, it will accept UTF-8 is the standard character format used in the world and here on line 7 I've got a link to the style sheet I'm going to be using an external style sheet which I will create later and I'm going to call it loan calculator.css I've just added a title called loan calculator so the title is what will be displayed in the browser window when the application runs moving on to the body section here which this is the opening body tag and that's the closing tag the body tag basically is where the content for the actual application is rendered so any content you see within the body tag is what is going to be visible to the user so here I've got an ID I'm going to wrap the content inside a div and I'm giving the div an ID attribute of loan cal and here I've got an h1 tag this is a heading tag that will display the title of the application it will just say, say loan calculator in here in between after the h1 I'm going to add some paragraph the paragraph will serve as input fields for the various parts of the loan calculator and here I've got a script this will be my JavaScript this is where I will add the logic or the function that will do the actual computing or calculation of the loan and this is the name I'm going to call it when I create the file file I have added some paragraph here I've added three paragraphs here that will be used as input field for us to input the values that we will use to calculate the loan so here I've got this we're going to be the loan amount and it's going to be in dollars and the, I've given the input an ID of amount the type is going to be in number and the minimum is one maximum five million and here I've got the on change event the on change event basically occurs when the value of an element has been changed so each time the values that's been inputted changes this on change event here will call this function which is a compute loan function and it will real calculate and compute the new value based on the input that has been entered so we'll be creating a function called compute loan later inside our JavaScript file here we've got another field here called interest rate and it's going to be in percent so this is where we'll input the interest rate and the type I've given it an ID value of interest underscore rate the type is going to be a number minimum value is zero maximum is going to be a hundred in terms of interest rate I'm going to start off with an initial value of 10 percent as the interest rate and then I've got here called step the step attribute basically um, is used to specify the legal number of intervals for an input element so this step here is basically specifying the legal number of intervals 
for the input element and normally you, you can use this with the maximum and minimum attribute you can see here i've got minimum attribute and maximum attribute also again we are attaching the unchange event so anytime this value changes it will call this function here called compute loan and here for the other paragraph we've got the months to pay so this will be the value to be entered for the amount of month it will take to repay the loan so i've given this input an id of month the type is going to be a number minimum value is one maximum value is 300 months 300 months basically is equivalent to 25 years so we you can change this value if you want to do that the value initial value i've given it to be one again i'm using the step attribute and the value of last step is one again just to re reiterate that the step attribute is used to specify the legal number of intervals for an input element all right again here we're calling the unchange event so if any time the value changes it will trigger this function here called compute loan and it will recompute the values entered here we've got a h2 element this is what will display the actual amount to be paid monthly so the amount you pay monthly will be displayed inside this h2 tag so all the values in green here are known, uh, known as attributes the values in green are attributes attributes basically provides additional information about the html element um, anyway you've got value here this value attribute basically specifies the value of an input element so whatever value you enter this is what is going to capture the value so i'm just going to save this we basically finished the structure we can run this inside our html to see what it looks like so i'm just going to open up the directory and double click on this loan calculator dot html and you can see here this is the basic structure so this is exactly how i want the structure to look we are going to create the logic that will make the loan calculator work so let's create a new file that we will use to write our javascript code so this is our html so i'm just going to click on the file option here and click on new file and i'm going to save this file i do save as inside the directory called loan calculator i'm going to save this as loan calculator dot js and make sure in the drop down i'm going to select javascript and click save so any code that I add here now will be a javascript code okay so the function i'm going to create i'm going to call it compute loan because i've already made references to it here inside my html code so i type in the word function to create a function you do function space followed by the name of the function and the function is going to be called compute no, notice I've used camel case, which means the first letter is lowercase and the first letter of the next word is uppercase. And next I need to place parentheses and then curly braces. And I'll separate the curly braces. In between the curly braces is where we'll add the logic for the loan. First thing I want to do, I'm going to add some variables. So let me run through the variables with you. On line three, I've created a variable called amount. This will be this will represent the amount of loan that you want to borrow and i've set it to equals to document dot get element by id and i passed in the id of amount if you're wondering where you got this id value from it's from the html side of things so here we've got an id called amount so that's what i'm referring to here and then the dot value basically refers to the value that you would input as the amount line four I've got a variable called interest underscore rate and I've set that to equals to the document dot get element by ID and the ID is interest underscore rate so whatever value we have as the interest rate is going to grab that so again if I go into my HTML you can see we've got an ID called interest underscore rate that's what it's referring to line five I've got a variable called months again this is equals to the document dot get element by ID and the ID is months again we have any value that is entered for that value for that month will be attached to this variable so if we come here again we've got an ID called months that's what it's referring to here we've got a variable called interest so this is going to represent the actual interest so the interest on the loan is going to be the amount which is this amount variable times 
the interest underscore rate times zero one. Anytime you have values surrounded by parentheses, those values are computed first. So it will do the interest rate times 0 0.1 first before the division and the multiplication. Okay. So the 0 0.1 basically gives it a two decimal places. So it will have two decimals after the figure. Line seven here, I've got a variable called payment and this variable is going to be equals to the amount. This will represent the monthly payment that the loan borrower have to pay. So it's going to be equals to the amount divided by the months plus the interest. And then here we are attaching the two fixed method. Basically this enables you to have two decimal places or two numbers after the decimal place. That's what that is for. Next, we're going to add a line of code that will be rep rep responsible for putting commas on numbers for three digits. So it will look through the value and then place a comma after every three digits. So I'm going to try and explain this line eight as much as I can here. Um, the payment basically here is going to equals to the payment um, dot to string. Basically, it's converting the value to string and then we is replacing it. This is where it's going to convert it into a money format. It's going to convert the form format into money and it's doing that using this replace method. And inside the replace method here, we've got these values. Uh, I'll try and explain these as much as I can. This slash B here um, basically um, is used to look within a word boundary. And what that means is that it can't be part of another type of word. So it's kind of a pattern it has to look for. And then this here, this question mark, um, basically the question mark and the equals to tells it to find whatever group is looking for. For example, it will look for, it's using this D slash three here to look for three digits. So it will look for any three digits in a row and then place a comma there. The plus, this plus basically uh, marks the three digits wrapped in parentheses um, to make sure that is treated as a block of three. So it basically helps to repeat the pattern. So it knows where to place the comma after every three digits. I've added another block, another line of code, line nine here. Line nine basically is going to be responsible for displaying the output. So it's going to say document, we're using the document of get element by ID method. And we are grabbing the ID, which is this here, this ID here this h2 tag. So it's going to grab that. This is where it will inject the result of the computed loan repayment. So it will grab that and it will replace that div, the content of it with this dot inner HTML. And the value of this inner dot HTML is this here. So it will now output inside this div here. It will output the word monthly payment. It will then give the value of the monthly payment, which is going to be in dollars plus the payment. Okay, so that's what it's going to do. So I'm just going to save that, do a file and save all. And I'll go into my directory, which is this, and just double click on the loan calculator.html to run the application. So let's quickly test it. Let's say I want to borrow 10,000. You can either input the value or you can use this little angles here to move it forward. So I'm going to put in 10,000. And let's say uh, the interest rate on that is 10%. And uh, let's say I want to borrow that over 12 months. This is what I'm going to repay every month, 916.67. So these values are changeable. So feel free to play around with the values to test the app. So that's basically it. And we've got the main functionality of the app working. Let's create a new file. So I'm going to click on file new and I'm going to save it as a CSS file. So I'll call it loan calculator.css. I'm just going to use lowercase and in the drop down here, make sure you look for the CSS format and click save. So this file here is now CSS. You can see here. So any code I add here will be CSS because this is not really a CSS course. I'm not going to spend too much time on the CSS part of things. I've already staged the code. I'm just going to add that in. So this is the CSS. I'm just going to quickly run through. Um, notice that when we created the HTML, these hash are all IDs. Okay, so we gave IDs, anything you got here, ID, these are all attributes. So inside my CSS, I am targeting all these IDs values here. Okay, so for the loan car here, which is, if we go into, which is this div here, this the actual div itself, the entire div is called loan car. So I'm giving it a width 
I'm wrapping it round. This is the width in pixels, the height, the background color, the color of this text, the margin from the left. Basically, I'm creating some space from the left, margin from the top, I'm moving some spaces from the top, moving it down. Padding refers to the space inside the div. So these are all the values on the right and the actual properties are on the left. This is the variable, the ID, sorry, the ID for the months. I'm giving it a width of that, height of that. And again, this is the ID for amount. So these are just basic CSS. All right, margin left width, and this is the heading tag. I'm giving the heading tag a font size of 40 pixels. So I'm gonna save that and click save all. So this is what the application looks like. If I refresh it, we should see this is the new look. All right, so I'm just going to, let's just do a quick one here. So I do a $500 loan and I'm paying this over 10 months. It tells me this is what I need to pay every month. So we've got the application working as designed. So this can come in quite useful, even in your day to day. If you've got a mortgage um, payment you want to calculate or you're planning to take out loans, this calculator can be. So that's it for this project. Thank you for watching and bye for now.